Hey guys, what's up? I got a really cool replay series here between Happy and Lin, the two best players of their respective race. They played in the maybe somewhat unfortunately named Don't Force Me Cup, which I think I would have probably chosen a different name, but it is what it is. It's nice that they're putting up some prize money uh, for Warcraft 3 tournament. Uh, number 40, in fact, the 40th instance uh, of this cup. I was not aware of it until now, but they had a decent price pool of about $1,400, uh, with the first place being about half of that, about $700. So uh, pretty nice, all taking place on one day, and Lin and Happy were fighting for it. So what can we expect? Well, some of the highest level plays in the world, of course, for the Orc Undead matchup. This was played three days ago, and I don't know the result. And it is on the new patch, so what what could these players potentially be using? Well, Undead has a buffed Crypt Lord with a buffed Spiked Catapace, buffed Necromancers with a buffed Cripple, and a buffed Skeletal Mastery upgrade. Uh, nerfed Nerubian Tower, and a, maybe a couple of other small things, really not too big much of anything. Oh yeah, the turn rate is better for Fiends and Abominations, so if you think you can sneak up behind an abomination and pinch his cheeks without him noticing you've got another thing coming he's gonna turn around 360 and confront you and the same for crypt fiends so uh for both races the tavern of course has had a change where the fire lord received three buffs namely the lava spawn split quicker the incinerate is cheaper and volcano does um i don't know something like 28 percent more damage 30 more DPS if you ever get to Volcano. Uh, for Orc, they have faster producing Spirit Walkers, faster producing Torrents, faster producing Walker Upgrade. Um, I think that's... Oh yeah, the Headhunters have their 25 health pack again. It was given to them a few years ago, but they didn't have through most of Warcraft's history. So let's start uh, proper talking about the game and what's going on. Lin has gone for a one burrow, 17 population tech with a war mill into a second burrow and no barracks with an immediate Farseer harass without intel, no information. No AMD too, for that matter. And Happy immediately starts ghoul creeping. He's gonna use coil on the Makrura snapper. He's gonna try to keep the ghoul away to get cool, to get cool down again. Coil cool down, coil down. The one ghoul has been killed. A player's right now we don't see any attacks. barracks yet. We have uh, Happy, he sold his TP and he got some creeps here. Uh, Farseer killed one ghoul uh, right now, right here. It's gonna harass some more ghouls. There is mana for coil. It is not gonna be used to save this ghoul just yet it's just gonna try to walk it home and let it regenerate on the blight there's already a nerubian tower this game actually reminds me a lot of another recent game of lin against happy that i watched uh, probably a week ago in that game i believe lin killed two ghouls hey man where's this stuff game i'm having a bit of a deja vu i think this ghoul's gonna die too if so, I've seen this before. Hey, if man. this ghoul dies. Hey, Cuckoo Dota. Thank you very much, Cuckoo, for the raid. If this ghoul dies, then I've actually seen this before. But then maybe I've not casted it yet. It looks like it's actually not dying. Dude, this is weird. They had a very similar game. This map. They had a, they had a game on this map where one Fars here killed two ghouls. But I could swear that was more than three days ago. Yeah, okay, this is not that game. This never happened. <laughs> this Farseer surround never happened. So, it turns out that Lin is kind of good at... Uh, oh, a nice kill there on the Farseer. Lin is kind of good at killing ghouls with just the Farseer. I feel like that's something that shouldn't happen. He got one ghoul now, he got two ghouls the last time. I believe back then he went uh, double bestiary uh, with a totem for walkers. Let's see what he's doing now. Uh, it's the same thing. Same opening again. Totem, double beast theory. Uh, back then, it was... Oh, 
there we go. It's Fire Lord this time. Back then it was with the Torrent Chieftain. Now it's going to be with the Fire Lord. So this is really interesting. Fire Lord, of course, received some buffs. We see a lot of people using it. In fact, Moon was able to beat Happy, which is pretty rare for him. I mean, Moon beat Happy in WCG 2008. All right? He beat Happy in WCG 2008 to, to take the Grand Finals position. Happy ended up, uh, I believe, taking third place, beating, uh, rest in peace, uh, Holt. But usually these days, uh, Happy has Moon's number, but Moon just won against Happy, maybe twice even, in various tournaments with the Fire Lord second. It looks like uh, Lin, likewise, is also looking to do a little bit of Fire Lord abuse. Let's see if it's gonna work. And the reason it's awkward is because everything the Farseer and Fire Lord do is extremely vulnerable to destroyers. Like, what do you even do against destroyers? Destroyers eat the lava spawn, they eat the feral spirits, and they can dispel soul burn. So the only thing you would have left is incinerate and chain lightning. Incinerate doesn't affect magic immune air, like destroyer, I believe anyway. I, th I think the magic immunity protects them. All right, so all you have is chain lightning, or you can just try to attack things on the ground. You're facing a level three DK with two level one heroes. And you're hard forcing an expansion with a burrow. Coil Steel was successful. And he knew this was going to happen. There was not much he could do about it. Oh, I like this. This is a variation. So he's got his double walker. So this gives him spirit link and tries to keep his heroes alive a bit with that uh, spirit link, which spreads the damage. A player's force is Every damage attack. that you receive, half of it is spread among all other linked units. It also makes wyverns less nukeable. He's got one quick raider with the quick and snare upgrade in order to protect the expansion so that he can kill one unit at a time or even focus fire the death knight. And then he's saving money. He has these three unit production buildings, but he doesn't immediately s spam produce out of them. That fire lord would have been dead, by the way, if he didn't have link. So he gets that one quick raider with the ensnare, but he's not overusing, overproducing. Instead, he saves up money for the great hull. And then he pressures with his first wyvern while there's still the air advantage considering you know happy has a lot of different investments to make right now namely three statues he lost one so normally he would only need two a he needs to buy orb of corruption he needs to consider a third hero he needs to get ghoul frenzy and this ghoul frenzy upgrade comes exactly you know at the seven minute 30 750 mark not very exact let me rephrase the ghoul frenzy upgrade needs to be made the moment black citadel finishes and that's going to be somewhere between the seven to eight minute mark that also means that if at that time you reveal a wind rider it cannot be countered by a gargoyle fiend or fiend with web because your crypt is busy and you don't have the money for two crypt yet as you see he got orb of corruption which is a creeping speed accelerator and that's not even to mention yet, destroyer upgrade. Actually morphing one to a destroyer or hiring third hero yet, like uh, an alchemist, for instance. So uh, Lin is using this time to increase his air superiority. He sticks with just a single raider and the two walkers and is completely transitioning to bat riders. It's not wind riders and then belatedly making bats to protect the wind riders no it's mass bat riders so bats can kill ghouls but they're very nukeable by nova but they also preordain defense against the destroyers so happy is not likely to make destroyers because he sees so many bats already and that means that every lava spawn and feral spirit is going to get the value that it deserves it's not going to get unsummoned by devour magic and in fact bats do respectable damage on uh, statues don't forget there was a balance change that gave bat riders more siege damage so just more base damage but they nerfed the liquid fire which essentially made them slightly better at fighting without exploding it made them worse against buildings at tier three but it makes them better against buildings at tier two and that's what lin is he's tier two he has got no time or money to go tier three so 
in this specific purpose this is very similar to the uh Moss Fairy Dragons uh, build from Night Elf in that you make lots of trash air units against Undead after taking a fast expo and then you have summoner heroes. So this is so similar to like Keeper Beast, Keeper Fire Lord, Keeper Demon, um, Six Archer into Hippogriff Rider and then uh, Fairy Dragons. Now if Happy's hero levels go up this kind of army is just utter garbage, right? If you have enough coil nova those bats they can't kill anything and in fact i'm still not sure that this is good i feel like if you get uh, some fiends out but he's not even making fiends he doesn't want to web them he's just going to focus them down with heroes and focus on the ground now this is uh, quite a fateful moment in the game because happy starts a creep camp he gets creep jacked he's taking some damage from creeps it's mostly okay the lava spawns and the walkers actually do really good damage on the ghouls. Dude, this is such a wild build. I've never seen anything like this from Orc. In all my years in Warcraft 3, I've never seen anything like this. And it's almost a zero DPS army. <laughs> I mean, you saw what happened when Batriders fired on the Lich over and over and over. It's in fact the Fire Lord that's absolutely owning the Lich. As long as he can apply that incinerate buff over and over, he lost it. And it's gone. Quite an assortment of army. Walker, Batrider, Lava Spawn. If you told me this, I may have called you a liar and a cheat. I may have said, no, Bert. I don't quite buy that. I don't think Batrider, Walker, Lava Spawn will ever be a valid build. Get off your horse, you madman. As little damage as bats do, Lava Spawn makes up for it a bit. Um, and the Cardi Ever Burning makes up for it a bit. Incinerate makes up for it a bit. And is there at any point he's gonna make Wind Riders? I feel like Moss Bats is kind of like buying insurance. He's kind of buying insurance that he can't get owned by destroyers. Which kind of opens up him being allowed to now go for Wind Riders. But maybe he never goes to Wind Riders. Maybe Lin correctly identified Wind Riders are mostly garbage. And that even though you got the bats to enable the Wind Riders, he's like, why should I enable you? Enabling is an unhealthy habit. Right? I'm just as guilty as you are if I enable you. So if Wind Riders suck, it doesn't mean that Lin has to. So he just makes mass bats. We'll never know what he would have made after 62 population. But there we go. That's uh, that's game number one. See you tomorrow for Stormgate closed beta baby. Yeah. Cool shirt BTW. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Floss Daily. Yeah, I'll try out Stormgate tomorrow and uh, you can... You can follow that video on my YouTube too. My first impressions of the game. So yes, uh, Lin won that game. Lin won that game. Happy still had all of his heroes. This is game number two. Happy still had all of his heroes, but he had not much units left. And he knew that Lin still has an expansion with an ever-growing gaggle of bat riders. Now normally, Lin is very fast at adapting and so is Happy. Now, because Lin won, there isn't much to adapt usually. You have to be very good to adapt to your own victory. Because you think like, ah, you know, it worked. I can do it again. How will Li how will Happy react? The last time Lin showed a new build, it was also the double bestiary, single totem, raider opener with walker. And that was a very strong build and he rushed basically. He put up an expansion with FSTC and then he rushed and killed the shop and prevented statues and destroyers from coming out. But this time he took a different twist. And this is a, such a great way to build strategies in an RTS is to use the same opener you just developed, but arrange everything in a completely new constellation. So they see the same opener. They say, okay, I've seen this before. I now know what it means. I've studied your game. You go for TC second, you get your expansion up and then you do a mass raider rush. Happy lost to that once, then adapted, 
made his shop in a safer place, made it earlier. He made his slaughterhouse earlier. He made statues earlier so that it was never possible for Lin to completely shut down the slaughterhouse timing uh, and its unit production. And then Happy beat Lin back. But Lin adapted himself. Now last game, he killed a ghoul and then he got his hero surrounded and coiled to death. So he was forced to use altar time to respawn the Farseer. And maybe that's why he made Fire Lord. Because training Fire Lord is instant and it's from the tavern. Normally, at the time where you're starting your altar hero, if your level one hero dies at that very moment, it is very common for someone to feel incentivized to make a tavern hero, even if otherwise they didn't plan to do so because of the shared training time in the altar. It's like uh, you may take a shower at the gym instead of at home if your sibling is always hogging the communal bathroom. Make sense? Normally you may not shower at the gym because the other dudes is always looking. Uh, you don't feel comfortable with it, but you may just bury your shyness because you want to shower, but they're in that damn thing for an hour, your siblings. See the DK going across the map. Uh, Happy was trying to do some split creeping with his ghouls and skeletons. He is maybe gonna lose that ghoul. Yep. Another surround! Dude, this kid is so good! Just hold the surround, get a dust, I'll be right back. Just gonna do some groceries. Oh! Oh, neat! He's just gonna let him go? I feel like he didn't need to be worried though about this creep camp. Ah, uh, he doesn't want to waste too much time. The whole dust buying and coming back here and surrounding him. He doesn't feel like it's worth it. A player's forces are under attack. Especially they keep holding the toilet. Why? I don't know. There can be several reasons your siblings hog the toilet, Timmer Stream. Speaking as one who's been guilty of it as well. In a busy family life, I had three brothers and two parents. So we live with six. We only have one bathroom and one other toilet that's not the bathroom. So sometimes you just want to have your moment of peace in a wild living situation sometimes. So you stay on the toilet longer than necessary. All right, you just read your Donald Duck magazine because it's the only place you truly feel peace where you can't be disturbed because you don't have a lock on your bedroom. It's a little bit of an escape from everything. Even though it's stinky, at least you're alone. Okay, now we know it's not just because his Farseer died that he made the Fire Lord. It's actually by design. There we go again. Fire Lord, repeat, this time without the Farseer loss. And again, the double bestiary and totem, four peons, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, eight workers again on lumber. How were the articles in Donald Duck magazine? How were the articles? How do you mean? Forces are under attack. It's really nice. We had a weekly Donald Duck delivery. It was good back then. So he finished creeping. Lava spawns went for a double split. What were they writing about? Oh, it was just a comic. They were writing about Duckburg and stuff and the Beagle Boys. One raider, one wind rider, and one walker. And no one snare yet. So this is the quickest way to get all the units you want out on the field. One raider and then one ensnare would be the quickest way to get an ensnared raider out. Two raiders would be the quickest way to get push power out. One raider, one wyvern, but no ensnare. Again, it's something I've never seen before for to be serious to finish and to do like this. Look at how many lava spawns he has. He's got such creeping acceleration. Oh my God. The DK stole the Ogre Mage level 5, stole the Claws of the Attack plus 8, and Lin just kind of continues undeterred like he doesn't care, like it doesn't matter. He, he has so fast creeping. So uh, Burrow into Expo again. 
Uh, fortified defenses not started yet, nor finished. Which is going to be the one burrow. Uh, definitely doesn't have enough lumber right now to make the great hole. Never mind, it was already queued. So he just makes the burrow and then shift Q makes the great hole, even though that ties up resources. At least it guarantees that he's always got enough money. So he's now going to attack. Has incinerate second. Uh, Windrider still quite uncountered right now. You know, this build is so reminiscent of how Fly was playing against Undead in 2020. In 2020, when Blizzard buffed the Crypt Lords to insane levels, and they changed the fact that Crypt Lord summons two beetles instead of just one beetle, Crypt Lord expansion play by Undeads was all the rage. We saw so much of it. And the Crippler expansion play was really a super strong build against Orc that was very tough to stop. And one of the builds that emerged from Orc against it in an attempt to stop the Crippler Fexpo was Fly 100%, Farseer Fire Lord, Double Grant Tier 2 Rush into Double Bestiary Mass Wyvern. So you farce your Fire Lord, Mass Wyvern, and, and then you just try to try to break the undead, focus his hero, fight his ghouls. It wasn't really about cancelling or killing the Expo uh, gold mine, because it would take too long and they scale too much from their economy to make fiends already, and which just beat Wind Riders. It was about like trying to attack the Crypt Lord and just have a lot of summons. F Fly would like lose his hero a lot, and still end up winning sometimes, not always just because he had critical numbers of wind riders and he used his heroes lives he threw away their lives essentially he used them to serve the greater means of slowing down the undead and to have critical wind rider numbers you seek me help which subscriptions are weird take Thanks, some dude. money directly and give logan some packs he worked hard for those all right all right oh well thank you dude appreciate it yellow so th that's where we first saw Farseer Fire Lord. But we haven't seen it much since. And it's again Mass Bats. That's so funny. He's straight up just going six Bat Riders. Accidentally sent his peons home again, even though the expo is done. And that was a really debilitating attack by Lin. He killed some ghouls. Slowed Happy down a lot. Man, this is a lot better than my uh, build from two years ago, where I went Blade TC, Headhunter, Walker, and Doctor. I've always liked the idea of Walkers against Undead, because the Spirit Link is so strong against Coil Nova. Like, any race wishes that they had Spirit Link against Coil Nova. Yeah, man, he had Coil in one second. He could have just kept chasing and killed him. Literally, his DK could just run up and kill. There is no chance he would die, right? But yeah, that was like kind of cool because I was like, hey, I want to have Spirit Link against uh, the Colonova Nova so that my single hero doesn't take as much burst. But then the problem was Destroyers. I beat every undead there was except Happy. And Happy used insane Destroyer Micro. Others tried the same on the other European undeads. But they kept getting their destroyer killed by my blade and my lightning orb and purge and the berserkers that I had. And then once the destroyer died, I was allowed to cast Spirit Link again, which wouldn't get dispelled. But Lin has an actually better strategy in, in that he has the counter for destroyers ready. So walkers are a god tier unit against undead in general. Their biggest counters are Frostworm, Destroyer and uh, to a degree Crypt Fiend, but I don't think it even really like super pans out. I guess high level heroes and Crypt Fiend Walkers don't do any damage to Fiends. Fiends do do good damage to Walkers. Fiends do rely on Focus Fire, which Walkers kind of dissipate. I guess the biggest counter of all is destroyer and worms and frost uh, worms and fiends are just soft counters. So walker are like god tier unit against undead, but never go for it because of destro. So you get the bats for the destro. Now, while that makes a lot of sense from a unit counter perspective, 
this would still nonetheless usually not be a valid build because you can't get the expo that safely and easily but it looks like the early game power of the fire lord has enabled and opened up this build in a way that was previously not possible so whenever you have something that's strong early game almost four years it's not just for rushing, it's for rushing defense for something greedy, if that makes sense. So it's something to remember. Anytime you're in RTS and you find something that's strong early, or even any strategy game, when you build up tempo in a game by something that's strong, then you can use that subsequently for greed. Or you can use the tempo and the strength early game to just go and win already. So it's either for a rush, but the second phase of strong early strength and tempo is to use it to cover for greed. And that's how it actually enables and opens up the expansion. I am telling this to everyone to teach about games and also for myself to re remember it because Lin's showcasing of this build, it looks immediately so logical and difficult to solve for Undead that it never fails to make me feel a little bit of shame even alongside the admiration for the build that I see. Like, why didn't I think of that? It's really cool. Very cool uh, replay series. Thanks for suggesting the series to me, Save Orcas. I hope you guys enjoyed. GG.